Sagittarius, and welcome to Adventures in Pixie Land. This is going to be your weekly reading going from August 10th to August 17th. This space has been cleared and these decks have been shuffled and cut with your energy in mind, so we are ready to jump in. But before we do, let's handle that busy work. Please do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell below. So you will know when Sagittarius content is uploaded. Sagittarius content comes out every single Thursday. If you're feeling my vibe and would like a personal reading, please feel free to check out that description box below. If you're really feeling my vibe and would like to subscribe, please click on that link to my Patreon account in the description box below. Patreon subscribers get a certain number of free monthly personal readings, depending upon subscription level. Also down there you will find all of my social media contacts. And on every single one of those platforms, I'm sorry Sagittarius, you will get a, uh, a daily astrology reading, a daily Elder Futhark Rune, a daily Romance Angel Oracle card, a daily Fairy Wisdom Oracle card, a daily Starseed Oracle card, and a daily Priestess of Light Oracle card. All of those things can be found put together here on YouTube with an energy summary at the end. It is for the general collective, and it is not uh, for any one specific sign. You can also find now on here on YouTube as shorts, the daily astrology reading and the daily Elder Futhark rune. All of the links for YouTube um, do post on the other social media platforms. And also down there in the description box is uh, a link to my Red Bubble store. It's got a variety of graphics for things that... Uh, are phrases that I use, that I've created, that I use uh, here. Now, if there's any particular phrase that I use that you would like to see on a t-shirt, hat, cell phone case, whatever, it's got a variety of, of products over there, um, or any particular picture that I might post that you think you would like on any of those kinds of products, please do comment uh, down below because I will, you know, design something up and then make it available and let you know. Um, the email is down there. You could also contact me that way if you prefer. So, we start off on, uh, well, the first day to watch out for, this reading starts out on the 10th, but the first day to watch out for is the 12th. So no, no real problems on uh, the 10th or the 11th. You know, it's just a, really a matter of it, making sure that you're taking breaks and making sure you're keeping uh, focused, and on the 11th, that's about home and hearth is going to make you feel secure. So focus on your home. Okay, now, on the 12th, we have a waning crescent moon. Spend time being mindful and going with the flow and surrendering to the world around you. We do have an upcoming new moon. It will be in the course of this reading. So I'll give you the full thing on that. That waning crescent moon on the 12th, though, is in cancer, emotional cancer. So we're going to be in our feels. Trine, that's a 120 degree angle. So opposites and squares are not good. Trines, conjunctions, sextiles, because these are, these are all just angles from the planets away from each other. You can look at it in the telescope and, you know, back trace, you know, if it's accurate or not, by the constellations that are near that planet once you know where it is in the night sky. But the sextiles are 60 degree angles, trines are 120, opposites are 180, squares are 90, conjunctions are within 10 degrees. Okay, because it could be, you know, 0 to 10. That's a conjunction. So some parts are positive, some parts are negative aspects. Trine is a positive aspect to restrictive Saturn retrograde in dreamy Pisces. Saturn retrograde at any sign is karma okay in this particular instance saturn in pisces when it's direct means that our work if saturn is our planet of work is in our internal self healing ourself upgrading ourself improving ourself in the inside it can be reflected in a new workout routine or a better eating habits 
maybe you quit smoking, you know, whatever it might be. It can be reflected in health because as we heal our emotional traumas, we in turn want to take better care of ourselves. That is a byproduct of trying to heal oneself. It's what you do when you're dealing with something that you're not happy with because you wouldn't stop something unless it had some after effect on you that you weren't happy with. I mean, if you were doing it, you probably were enjoying it, right? But if it's not healthy for you, it's not healthy for you. That's a sign that you're healing yourself. When it is retrograde, though, in Pisces, it means you're starting to, you know, not think it's you, but think it's external to you. And it might be. I'm not saying it's not. Because there are a lot of karmic situations. If you've been going, if you've been doing the work when Saturn was direct in Pisces, and you know you're making healthier choices for your body, in your home, your mental state, and you got to a certain point, you were like, why is all this still being restricted? I thought I was doing this by being unhealed. I'm happy I've healed. Now I've noticed that this is still here. Where is this coming from? And it could be coming from someone else giving you the evil eye trying to hold you back. That's what Saturn retrograde in Pisces is. When you have these two things together because you have all the feels about how you were being a karmically held back, you're going to find that those blockages because of the stuff that's happened over the last you know few weeks, especially starting with that full moon being it being a super full moon and eclipses that we've just had and then all the retrogrades that are happening that kind of stuff those blockages more than likely especially if you've been doing the work they're just cleared up and everything is going to move quickly now if you haven't been doing the internal work, if you haven't been fixing yourself, if your just default was to blame other people and you took no accountability for your own hurts, you might still feel the blockages. And then what's it's telling you on this day, you're going to be dealing emotionally with those blockages. So it's one of the two. You will know if, you, if spirit feels you've put in enough work. And the quickness is how you'll know. On the 15th, we have still in this waning crescent moon. Now it's in Passionate Leo. With self-focused sun in Passionate Leo, squared, that's a 90 degree angle in the night sky, disruptive Uranus in foundational Taurus. Foundational Taurus is, is like we should never have trusted that authority figure. People might feel oppressive today. They might, you might be feeling like somebody's trying to control you. Stay calm and be rational in your response okay it doesn't matter how other people act we're not going tit for tat that's hurt people hurting people we don't engage in that behavior we stay calm and rational we offer them some grace and compassion and understand that they may have just be having a bad day that doesn't mean let them walk all over you you can politely correct their mistake in thinking that they have the right to tell you what to do. But you can do that without intentionally trying to hurt their feelings. They're not going to like what you say one way or the other. But you don't have to be malicious about it. You don't have to call them names. Right? Okay, you're just creating a, a karmic wheel when you do that. Don't do that. Okay? That's, that's one of the lessons. Now, on the 16th, we have a new moon and that is where you start new projects and new phases within your life it is a great time to gather your thoughts together and plan for the month ahead you get 10 new moon wishes these are things you're trying to bring in your life it could be anything from as simple as joy money or more money is what i'd suggest because chances are you do have some money that comes in more money might be a, another thing a raise would probably even be a better statement if you actually you know are employed for a living right or raises are a thing that can happen yeah then there uh um you know i wouldn't use the word raise i.e if you're uh if you're on disability or something or or you're retired because that, like, it, it happens because it just happened. But it just happened. So it's not likely to happen again for years and years. So maybe just more money, like lottery winnings or something. Right? And then you could put anything. I had one uh, person the first time I did this, what he did is he was trying to fix up his car and he was an auto mechanic. So he put a list of car parts. 
So whatever the heck makes you happy, right? It doesn't matter. It's just you're telling the universe what you're focused on. And for him, those are particular goals. He needed each one of those parts to do what he wants to do to his car. So that's his goals. Get those parts. Earn the money that he needs to get those parts. And the universe can give them to you in a lot of different ways. It's creative, okay? Now you have a void of course moon at 5.38 a.m. And at the same time, you have a new moon at 5.38 a.m. So technically, the moon is still in Leo. So technically, it's a full moon in Leo for under a minute, which is about projects, okay? The new moon in Leo is about creative projects. Now, at 7.14 p.m., that moon goes EDT. Uh, so that's uh, if you're in Arizona with me, okay, that would be at 4.14 p.m. It goes into Practical Virgo, which is about small projects. We got Action Taker Mars in Practical Virgo. Trine, that's a 60 degree angle. No, sorry, Trine is a 120 degree angle. Sextile is a 60 degree angle, I stand correct. So, I correct myself. Uh, 120 degree angle, disruptive Uranus in um, Foundational Taurus. It's all about the small creative projects that you do in an unconventional way. Embrace change. It's time for the new. Don't hang on to the old. If anything has been making you, being around a certain person has made you feel terrible afterwards, don't be around that person anymore. Live it as much as you can. They're, they, if they feel like they're soul sucking your energy away, they are. Believe yourself. Remove yourself from the toxic situations. Spirit does not want you to... Like, and this is a thing that they do in today's society. Oh, my goodness. All right, let me get to the last one of these, and then I'll go into that. <laughs> Waxing crescent moon. Write a list of your intentions and keep them in mind. In practical Virgo. And it is opposite. 180 degree in the night sky. Restrictive Saturn. Retrograde and dreamy Pisces. Again karma. There's a stifling energy around you on this day. You need to find a way to give yourself some healthy breathing room. Like just get everybody to back rip off you. And I'm going to make this, this, and that even still bleeds into this, this other statement here before we jump into uh, the tarot. There is some weird thing that goes around in the world society today. And I'm, as every, every place, okay? I don't care what country you're in. I don't care, you know, what demographic you're in, in any way, shape, or form. However you identify, it doesn't matter. There is this weird trend that is set by unhealthy people or government organizations, if you prefer to uh, go the conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory uh, thought, my thing would still be that it would be unhealthy people in those government organizations. Whoever's pushing this narrative, I don't know, take your pick. But there's some unhealthy narrative that says the longer I can suffer through a trauma, the stronger I am. It's a badge of honor. And it is not. It is not a badge of honor. That is some bullshit nonsense. That is some douchebaggery at its highest of some weird authority figure trying to make you feel like you should stay in a terrible toxic situation to prove that you are strong. And that is not in alignment with what Creator wants. And that is categorically untrue. You cannot heal from a trauma until you are on the other side of it. You have to remove yourself from the toxic situation in order to heal yourself from it. You will never stop healing. Stop pretending like you will. You're not. You never will be. Because there's trauma going on in any one given present moment in anything. There could be great joy or there could be great trauma. At any given moment, it's a flip of a coin. It's all part of your path. You don't really know. None of us really knows what's going to happen every single day. We have a rough idea of what we want to accomplish. And whether or not that actually happens is entirely up to creator. We're not in control. We just want to think we are. We plan because you have to do something. So that's what we do. 
But we have to be cool and calm and collected when the plan doesn't go according to our plan. Because really, we're on his plan. So there's no point in being all weird about it. Okay? You don't need to stay in trauma to prove that you're strong. It does not make you strong. It means that you have to heal longer. And why would you do that to yourself? Once you know that the person that is around you is crappy and they're never going to treat you right because you've tried to compromise and do the right thing and be the adult in the room and they just aren't going to respond, it's time to limit your exposure to that. Sagittarius, August 10th to the 17th. Sagittarius, August 10th to the 17th. I know that's a little blunt, but I am channeling your energy, right? <laughs> Sagittarius, August 10th to the 17th. Sagittarius, August 10th to the 17th. That's better. Sagittarius, August 10th. to the 17th. Sagittarius. August 10th. That's far too many cards. To the 17th. Some of them you don't even want, trust me. Sagittarius. August 10th to the 17th. So you saw that. You're going to have to fight harder. Sagittarius. August 10th to the 17th. Okay, so one of them did come back. That's the one I was really supposed to see. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I hope that this reading resonates with you. I hope that you have been well in our week apart. If you are a new viewer, welcome. I will clarify all these cards. I promise I don't just sit here and preach the whole time. Before I clarify though, past, present, near future, someone to you, you to the someone, balance, outcome, summary. This is a general reading. Take what resonates, leave the rest. There is no gender in tarot. You are either walking up to someone and talking, or someone is walking up to you and talking. And this whole reading is a conversation between you and at least one other person. Some cards do mean groups. I don't see any here, but some cards do mean groups. And uh, on this channel, relationship is defined as a continued interaction between any two people. I'm gonna describe the energy. You're gonna place that on a person that sounds like, and then that is the person we are talking about. All right. Two wands in your past. That is, you were contemplating some sort of big move, some sort of plan, some sort of something. You've got the globe there. You could have been traveling. Here's a VW bug. There's a little, like, surfboard. If you peep it, that seems like, hey, I want to go on a vacation and go surfing kind of energy. So staring out the window, daydreaming, standing at a crossroads, trying to figure out how you can get to where you want to be. Gemini Virgo energy there with the magician. But I feel like that's more just your energy. You're trying to manifest, and you've been vocal about it. You're talking about what you want to try to have happen and that's good when we talk about what we want to happen in a positive way we tell the universe what we want them to give us so creators listening keep that up that's beautiful energy four of cups though in your present moment there's something you just don't want or there's an opportunity you're not seeing one of the two now i will say we'll have to clarify to find out more we're going to clarify everything but the four of cups there in the um, careful with nope right that's my nope card 
it's okay to not want something. You don't have to take everything the universe might offer to you. Maybe they got your order confused. It's fine. You can reject it back and be more specific with them. Just you understand that they don't, un, they don't know the, no, I don't want that. Like you can give them that response once they've offered you something, but you cannot be sending to them, you know, stop giving me this. They're not real good with the stop part. They don't really do stop part. They throw things at us. So you got to focus on what you want them to throw at you. Like, give me money, right? Like, focus like that. <laughs> money is coming to me now in the positive. Like, money comes to me now because I call it to me. Like that, okay? <laughs> don't tell them what you don't want. <laughs> tell them what you, what you do want. So careful with that note card energy. But you're in that note card energy in the moment. Seven of cups is because there's confusion. There's choices, but there's too many choices. You don't know. See how there's clouds all around these choices? It's like a fog, right? It's unclear. It's hazy. Some of these choices are very dangerous. Some of these choices might be kind of cool. That looks like and maybe you could have a dragon. It looks, that looks like a little tiny dragon to me. Does that look like a little tiny dragon to you? Comment below if that looks like a little tiny dragon to you. It does to me. That's kind of cool. I'd like to have a little, you know, little dragon I can hold in my hand. Page of Pentacles. That is some sort of opportunity coming in. So maybe you will get a little tiny dragon you can hold in your hand. I mean, you kind of are a little tiny dragon. You guys are uh, the dragonfly is the symbol that I uh, associate with Sagittarius. The very determined uh, being, the dragonfly. There, it deals with a lot of it, like it, like you guys with your emotions. Sometimes your emotions are on your sleeve, but that's more usually your more fiery stuff. Your deeper, your softer emotions are a little bit deeper inside. Not that you can't express them, just that you feel them really deep. And you only share them with the people that you've decided you can trust on that level. Everybody else kind of gets that nine of wands energy. <coughs> nine of wands is associated with your sign, actually, in the, in the tarot. So you guys have that sort of uh, energy to you, and so does the dragonfly. Nine of cups. Someone to you. That's some happiness. They want to come share some joy with you. That's a beautiful thing. Ace of pentacles. You could be making them an offer. Or maybe the joy they're sharing with you is an offer they're bringing to you. Page of Swords. That is you finding something out. Some information coming your way. It's a communication. Maybe you have to do some research. It could also indicate somebody who's been watching you. Not that that has to be a creepy thing. It's because they could just like what they see. You know, that's Ace of Pentacles. So it could be they could be like, "Hey, do you want to apply for this job?" Kind of situation because they've been keeping track of you. Six of Wands, that is victory. Whatever you find out, it's good. It's, it gives you a break, Four of Swords. Possibly maybe taking a vacation or something like that. Star card, there's an element of the divine here. Okay, this is Aquarius energy, uh, but there it is really very much an element of the divine here. Because this isn't a lot of people cards popping up here. I mean, the page of pentacles could be an earth sign the page of swords could be an air sign but you know it's not real heavy like that where we go it's these signs because it's just an immature person in that sign where it's a communication primarily i look at them as communications rather than actual people now it could be children communicating with you there's virgo and gemini over there but otherwise an aquarius here that otherwise that's it there are no other signs so it's not heavily people, it's heavily energy, heavily like focused, happiness and work and stuff. Seven of uh, Pentacles, it's needing to be patient and let something grow because, you know, this is the seed that you plant to grow into the Ten of Pentacles. That's what aces are. They're new opportunities. They're beginnings. They're not endings. What is this Two of Wands in Sagittarius is passed. You guys might have passed the test here. Congratulations. What is this two of wands in Sagittarius is passed? What is this two of wands in Sagittarius is passed? Oh, look at that. Look at that. Mm, I like it. 
So there was some sort of potential here. There was a choice that was made by you. Ace of Pentacles here, Ace of Pentacles there. You made a definitive choice. Could be uh, for your for your children, daughter specifically, if that's what you have. But uh, it doesn't have to be. It could just be children or the potential. You made a choice. You were standing at a crossroads and you made a choice, could be influenced by children, doesn't have to be, but you saw the potential and some sort of opportunity. So Scorpio energy with the judgment, Taurus energy with the Hierophant, but it is also a card of the divine. The divine presented you, or a Taurus presented you, through the divine working through a Taurus, because that's how it would work. Because that's how it works for every sign. The divine works through us. Uh, we're just the vessel. So you're the conduit for the energy of the divine. Because all of us have a soul, and all souls are divine. Because they're all pieces of God. That's just me. Or Creator, Buddha, Allah, take your pick. Uh, it's all the same to me. It's all equally valid. So, you made some very good choice. You, you passed the test. What is this magician? Courtship. Okay within a relationship you were manifesting a relationship what is this magician maybe you and your partner were manifesting something together page of pentacles page of cups you always want some children you've got a bunch of children on the board now <laughs> not all of them we're missing one what is this magician nine of wands look that's your energy like i was saying that's a Sagittarius energy with that defensive energy. There was something within a relationship. Could have been some immature communication. Could have been just a small offer. Because remember, this is a seed. Right? The Ace of Pentacles is a big seed, but it's a seed. It's a seed of new potential. It still has to work its way through the, the court cards. And just like I just explained in one of those uh, shorts that I put up recently, there's a way energy moves to the tarot. And the Page of Pentacles is the last spot before uh, it evolves into that, you know, that chariot energy to take it to the knights. Because a page wouldn't yet be on a horse. They would travel by chariot. And then they would mature into a older and then they would get their own horses. You had to earn the right to have a horse. Otherwise you had to walk. That's how that worked. So it could have been some small offer with maybe an apology that came in. Uh, something that improves a relationship because that's what you were trying to do. You were trying to manifest either an apology or an offer coming to you or the ability to give this to someone else because you were standing here in this defensive energy. You knew something needed to change. What's this eight of wands? You decided to be that change that needed to happen. Uh, you wanted to talk about commitment, marriage. If you, somebody, Some of you might have gotten engaged, in which case congratulations. What is this eight of wands? Could have gotten married. So again, congratulations. What is this Eight of Wands? I see. What is this Eight of Wands? Okay. You did some inner work. You started asking questions. Knight of Pentacles. All right. So any earth sign, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, heavy on that Virgo. Also card of Leo. So you have some confusion surrounding some sort of commitment. Here could be some sort of marriage, but it doesn't have to be. Because this is like getting the Three of Pentacles. It can be a contract document, paperwork. It can be legal documentation. But there was an inequity going on, and it was confusing you. You could see it. There's confusion here. And there's confusion in your near future, too. But you could see the inequity. This person is holding the scales of justice. Right? Two coins for this one, three coins for that one, one coin keeping for themselves. This is not equality. If it was equality, they would all have two. This is not equity. Because if they did, these two would both have three. In fact, if it was generosity, it would be equity, and these two would have three. Equity is where each person gets what they need. This person, this isn't all this person's monies. This is the monies they're willing to give away. Right? It's not the same thing. Okay? what they can afford to give to others which is what we're supposed to do so when we're being generous there's a commitment here that was unequal and it was confusing and you wanted to talk about it you used your words like the grown-up that you are and then you very slowly started moving forward congratulations what's this four of cups i love it when grown-ups use their words 
because that's how we pass tests. But then I'm a Taurus and, you know, we're vocal because we are ruled by the throat chakra, the Archangel Tzikul, the color blue. What is this Four of Cups? Like we're made to be vocal. Ten of Swords, Three of Swords. We almost can't shut up. What's this Four of Cups? Because we're not built to be that way. Six of Cups. So you knew this person for a while. Could be an X. That X there in the corner. Three of Swords. Three of Swords is a uh, third party situations, but it could also be just be outside interference. It's a type of stressor. It's a heartache, but it doesn't have to be another person. Which especially, I mean, if you're single and you're like, oh, well, I don't have a first person. Like, I only have me. I don't have two people to have a third person. So, like, <laughs> so you know, it's going to be a stressor then. And most of the times it is. Unless you see the rest of the cards and indicate that it doesn't have to be anything other than a stressor. If the boss is a jerk. The car broke down. The kids are sick. Like that, right? Somebody you've known for a long time is, did a jerk move here. Made you feel betrayed. Gave you some heartache well, with it. Right along with it. So uh, you're just saying nope to that kind of energy and you're heading down this new path. Peep the path. It's divinely guided. Divine's all over your reading here. You pass, like I said, you pass the test. Like, they, the divine said, come this way. Come hither, my child. Through the, you know, idyllic forest with the flowers and the butterflies. And you went, oh, that looks delightful. I think it will come hither. <laughs> but there's still some confusion here. What's the Seven of Cups? And the karmics are out in full force right now. And they're intentionally putting out confusion. So I'm not surprised. What is the Seven of Cups? All of us are closing cycles this week. Four of Swords, Seven of Pentacles. Unless you've chosen to stay in the confusion and not be awake, you're closing cycles. What's the Seven of Cups? Or you most recently have, because there is a slightly different timeline for all people. What's the Seven of Cups? Because it depends. As the person that you're interacting with on the karmic level, are they also awakening or awakened? So you both just decide not to have that relationship? And in which case you could be have th been through it already. But if you're not in that situation. Motion detected at front door. And that's your confirmation. Um, then you might have things that you have to adjust to. Peep the 44 and the 77 with the 33. That's the ascended master number. Oh yeah, you're going through some stuff. Look up the angel numbers 44 and 77. So. You're blocking some stuff with that Four of Swords. There's a concern there because there's confusion. Somebody's asking you to be patient, right? But it doesn't feel right to you. You feel concerned, so you're just blocking this. I'm saying, no, I'm moving on. I'm doing something else. You do whatever you want over there. I'm doing something else over here. What's this Page of Pentacles? Courthouse, could have to do with a Libra. Also, contract document paperwork. This is like getting the justice card. They could be working. Uh, it could be something that comes in as court documentation. It could be somebody working within the court system. It could be somebody who's um, can't leave the court system, if you follow me. What is this page of pentacles? Although, if you're getting offers that are coming from inside the prison system, do not accept those. People who are inside the prison system, who are actively, while they're there, inside the prison system, are not exactly known for their sound judgment. The point of being in there is for them to start to get some judgment. So they can be wiser when they get out and not repeat those mistakes. What is this page of pentacles? Now, they might be being karmic to you, though. <laughs> I would. I don't think they're going to, you know, they're going to need some time to learn their lesson, right? You might need to give them some distance, and that should be easy in that instance. Okay, so Page of Pentacles. Could have something to do with a contract, document, paperwork. Definitely has to do with your energy, because that is Sagittarius energy. Cancer energy there with the Two of Cups. But it's a relationship. Could be with a Capricorn. Could be with a Libra. But... Capricorn, or it could be a toxic relationship, right? It doesn't have to, it could be a toxic relationship with a Capricorn, but it doesn't have to be a Capricorn that it's toxic with. 
it could just be a toxic relationship that you're in that you might be trying to separate from because this could totally be you know with that nope cards over there it totally could be ending a cycle and that's what that page is it's an opportunity to end a cycle that's not healthy what's this nine of cups false person okay so this person might be pretending like they're happy when they're not what's this nine of cups Motion detected at front door. There's a confirmation for you. What's this nine of cups? So. King of cups, any water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, heavy on the Scorpio. Also, uh, a card of Libra, just like the courthouse is. Pisces energy there with the Sag, you know, well, Pisces energy there with the hangman, Sagittarius. So this person is going to come in, bring in an offer, an Ace of Cups to you. Happy Ace of Cups and the, you know, Nine of Cups is the Ten of Cups. Happy home, happy life. But there's something not truthful there. They're getting some sort of higher perspective. And they may not be being honest. They might look like they're emotionally balanced without being emotionally balanced. What's this Ace of Pentacles? It's a message. Okay, so that's all you'll know. They're going to reach out. What's this Ace of Pentacles? Queen of Pentacles. Okay. Eight of Pentacles. What's this Ace of Pentacles? Yeah, Ten of Wands. Okay, so they're going to offer some sort of opportunity. To you. Queen of Pentacles, any earth sign, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, heavy on that Capricorn, which is what this is, but this is also a card of Sagittarius. So it's you. They're going to offer you possibly some sort of work, some sort of uh, job, right, where uh, it, it's going to look like it can help you set down your burdens. Ten of Wands. Energy there. What's this? Page of Swords. Judication. Okay, so that's Scorpio energy. It's also about a choice. It's like getting the judgment card. What's this page of swords? This information you get is going to help you. Okay, yeah. See, what's this page of swords? I like it. I like it. What's this page of swords? I don't like the person lying to you, but it doesn't matter. They can't lie to you. They're going to try, but they can't. And I love that. I love that energy. I love when you can't because you had too much confusion in your past and in your, you know, your near future and your things. I don't like it. I don't like people treating people that way. Okay, so there's something you're going to find out that's going to have you making a choice to, that makes you think about your long-term future here. And uh, eight of cups, you're going to be walking away. You're going to be walking away from something. Um, Empress card is Taurus Libra energy. It also is a card of mothers. So it's the mother of your children. You could be a mother. It could be your mother. Uh, it could be a Taurus. It could be a Libra. Now, you could be finding this information out from this person or about this person. You have to take that as it resonates. Because remember, the King of Cups, which is up here, this is Libra energy. Okay. Now, Libra and Taurus can be pretty interchangeable in as far as the tarot goes because they're two sides of Venus. But the Hierophant being the side of the Divine and the Justice card being the side of man. Right? So they, they go in, the, in and out of each other's energies easily. What's the Six of Wands? That it's, you have to, I like to think of it as uh, the Queen of Swords, which is also a card of Libra. As well as, like say, the Scales of Justice, which is a card of Libra. Is the logical part. Think very Mr. Spock, right? Where then on the other side you've got Scotty who's your main engineer, your chief engineer, right? So liken it even with Star Trek, okay? Because I'm a giant, well, I call myself a neek because I'm a nerd geek. I'm a nerd because I have an MBA and I got a 3.83 in my MBA with an emphasis in marketing. So I'm a nerd, a math nerd. I work in engineering, mechanical engineering for a living. Math nerd science nerd, right? And then, yet, yeah, I also pull tarot and do other stuff, and I love the geek stuff. I love the sci-fi fantasy. Give it to me all. It makes you think, and that's why I love it. So, 
Then you got your chief engineer over here with uh, Mr. Scott or Bones if you prefer because it's the natural other side to Spock as they showed us, right? And what the reality with this side is, is this is your practical side. They interwave these energies and can exchange these energies because Tauruses are inherently practical people and Libras are inherently logical people. And these things get interwoven with each other because what is practical is often what is logical. But that is not always true because it is very practical to take accounting for your emotions. And that's what the divine helps you do. What is this Six of Wands in Sagittarius's outcome? What is this Six of Wands in Sagittarius's outcome? What is this Six of Wands in Sagittarius's outcome? King of Pentacles. And your sign, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Heavy on that Taurus. Also a card of Aries. Last card before the Emperor. So, there's some sort of situation in your family life here that's been rather a bit of a nightmare. Stress, worry, problems. And that's no good. You're going to talk about it. Eight of Wands. You're going to be chatty. Could be with a boss. Because this could be like, boss, thank you for this opportunity. I'm glad that you want to give me this raise or whatever. The, you know, you want, I'm glad you want to give me this responsibility. Right? With this message with the Eight of Pentacles and the Ten of Wands. Thank you for that. But if I'm going to do this job, I also need a raise. Right? And you're going to have some sort of victory in there. Don't be afraid to ask for what you need. If you ask for what you need, you're going to be likely to get it right now. What's this Four Swords? Occupation. Especially if you're interacting with a Taurus. Or especially if you are a Sagittarius who has a partner that's a Taurus. Okay, because when two people combine themselves together in that, you know, that way, whether it's, you know, marriage or a long-term commitment or whatever it is, if this is your romantic partner and you're paired, you know, your blessings are their blessings, their blessings are your blessings. That's what you sign up for, right? And right now, Jupiter is in Taurus. So, and that means that we recognize our blessings in this, this time frame in the material world. It means more money. It means more prosperity. It means more security on the, the practical front. This is the time to ask for what you want, if you're, especially if you're a Sagittarius paired up with a Taurus. What is this Four of Swords? What is this Four of Swords? What is this Four of Swords? Ten of Pentacles. King of Swords. Wheel of Fortune. So, and with the Occupation card. So, some sort of break. Again, could be a trip, could be a vacation. Could be from work. Right? King of Swords. Any air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. Heavy on that Aquarius. Also, card of Capricorn. That's a couple of times you've gotten Capricorn energy in this reading. And so this Wheel of Fortune is in, in play, though. Again, it's a card of the divine. There's some sort of decision that's going to be made here surrounding some sort of work situation that is a matter of the divine. Remember, this is clarifying the victory card. So it's not like you have anything to worry about. It's a victory that's coming your way. It's a victory over this worry, this concern, because you're going to use your voice. Your voice is going to help lead you to victory. What's this star card? I mean, it's a card of the divine. The lovers. Okay, that's a choice. It's Gemini energy and Aquarius energy for the star. What's the star card? Aquarius energy with the king of swords. So it could be that you're, you know, you have a boss who's an Aquarius. Queen of cups, ace of swords. What's the star card? Yeah, you're going to have a realization here. Sun card. That's Leo energy, but it's also the happiest card in the deck. Your victory is going to be illuminated for you, and it's going to make you be happy. You're going to have this uh, Ace of Swords. That's a powerful yes card right there. That is a powerful realization that leads you to happiness here. Because you're going to make a choice here. And I think it's going to be to emote. Queen of Cups. Any water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Heavy on the Cancer. Also, card of Gemini, which is what the lover's card is. So regardless of what sign your employer might happen to be, 
doesn't really much matter. You don't have to ask. <laughs> you just need to use your intuition about the nature of the relationship. Right? The divine is trying to tell you something about the nature of the relationship. And this, that realization is going to make you in this state of happiness so that you are vocalizing. So you need to be open. Focus on that positivity right now. What's this seven of pentacles? Expectation. Okay. You, you were expecting to have to wait. What's the seven of pentacles? Like you weren't going to get a fast response. What's the seven of pentacles? What's the seven of pentacles? You were waiting before, though. You were in waiting energy before. What's the seven of pentacles? No, we're not. Mm -mm. Oh, it's too many anyway. And I don't like that card. <laughs> like, I don't mind it when it comes up because sometimes it has to. But where did we see that? I know we did, though. I bet you. I think it's in the past. There we go. You're in your near future. Seven of pentacles. You're concerned about something that's confusing. You feel like there's a blockage. You want to take a rest and a break from that. Seven of Pentacles. You're concerned with the wait, right? So Seven of Pentacles, you're still expecting to have to wait after you get to this point in the reading. But you need to be using your intuition, Cancer, Pisces, energy. You need to look beyond the veil. You need to look at what the expectation is because look, this lady's looking out the window and the high priestess is almost the same energy. Because that's like getting the seven of pentacles as well. It's waiting. It's expectation. It's being focused on growth. But she's also looking out the window. And this one gets to see behind the veil. It's all like the same energy. I never really realized that before, but that's kind of cool. I like that. <laughs> so, I mean, and this is how it works. As you teach, so shall you learn. <coughs> we all become teachers eventually. Four of Wands. That's about a relationship. You were expecting to have to be patient to look beyond the veil, to have an expectation of patience. Right? While well, you're trying to figure out something and use your intuition within a relationship, but instead what you get is victory. You're not going to have to wait. If you do this now, if you vocalize now to this person what you need, if they're asking you for more responsibility, if they're asking you to, you know, to do something, and they're bringing in you in some sort of offer that might end up being a burden for you rather than a blessing, you're going to find out some stuff about it here. Before you make a full commitment... Before you make a full commitment to this thing, you're going to find out some of this stuff and you're going to, you know, like how it's going to affect, say, maybe your personal life and you're going to express this to somebody and it will lead you to victory. But keep that in mind. you got to be an adult and use your words. Don't come at people with aggression either. Just simply express, you know, with as much grace and compassion as you can, what you need. Sagittarius. Advice for Sagittarius, August 10th to the 17th. This is a great reading, Sagittarius. <laughs> Advice for Sagittarius, August 10th to the 17th. Advice for Sagittarius, August 10th to the 17th. Okay, so you need to let go of the resentment and defensive energy. You need to take a look here. Let that be illuminated. Remember the heart of joy, right? If you want more joy in your life, you have to be more joyful. You have to take in gratitude and appreciation for the small things. And I, I mean that quite literally, okay? I literally take a joy in the smallest thing ever. I have got this hummingbird in my backyard that I have named Willow. Willow is not afraid of me in any way, shape, or form. Willow will actually go. I have the hummingbird feeders. I have three of them because we started having hummingbird wars. So they're very territorial. And we started hanging them in the different windows. Willow will go from hummingbird feeder to hummingbird feeder without sipping anything until she sees me. And then she will stop and land on something and be still and tilt her head around so she's looking at me until I look at her. 
and then she will sit from the hummingbird feeder and she will do this at least once a day and the other time she'll fly out into the sunlight and flap her wings around so that I can see the iridescent purple and green that she actually has. Is a girl because she looks gray but in the right sunlight you can see with the UV light the beautiful iridescent feathers that she has and if I'm in between like she scolded me the other day I was stopped i was in the process of taking down two of the hummingbird feeders to wash them out and refill them for her but because they were empty and one of them was mostly empty and there were some weird little bugs in there and i didn't like that i needed to clean it can't just refill it and i stopped for a second after having one of them that was empty in my hand and stared at my phone for something and she came so close that i could hear her wings like really loud like she was right next to my ear and she was like, hey, what are you doing? I want my breakfast, please. Stop being distracted. You're supposed to care for your pets first and then pay attention to your device. And I'd be like, I'm sorry, Willow, you're quite correct. Let me come inside and finish the test. That kind of interaction with her makes me feel joyful because that is a trust from something else. It's just a small piece of gratitude that I can hold on to and help me be uplifted through the day. You need to hold on to that abundance because it's what you want. You want that joy. Express that joy. Let go of the defensive energy. If you approach people with defensiveness, then they are going to be defensive back to you. And then nobody wants to give anybody what they want because nobody's coming from a heart open place. Come from a heart centered place of grace. If somebody's making you feel defensive, if there is something, because you make you feel defensive, really, I should re reassess that how I say that. If somebody does something and it makes you, you feel then defensive. You feel like you need to be defensive in, in, in response to whatever they're doing. That is an invitation to go heal. That is a wound that needs your attention. Now, I'm not saying let somebody be disrespectful to you. That's a different thing. But them trying to be disrespectful to you should not have you erupting with a bunch of emotion. It should have you pausing and going, I'm sorry, who did you think you were talking to? But correct them with respect. Even though they were, they were disrespectful to you. If they're disrespectful to you, that says things about their character. If you're disrespectful to others, it says things about yours. So no matter what, how anybody else is treating you, you treat others with respect so you don't create the karmic tie. If you respond back with defensiveness, you tie yourself to that karmic wheel with them again. And that's not what you want. You don't want to be having that with anybody, let alone whoever that person is standing in front of you. Burn away. Walk away from that defensive energy. Open up to the light of joy and walk away from the defensive energy. That's your advice. If you have a yes or no question you would like answered, this is the time to think it because this is the deck that does it. I'm going to pull three cards. This is your opportunity to think of... <laughs> One to three yes or no questions that you would like answered. Message for Sagittarius. Forgiveness. Message for Sagittarius. Big happy changes. Message for Sagittarius. If you believe... Yes, yes, that's a yes, yes, and yes. If you forgive somebody in your best for something so that you can lay down your defensive energy, you will have abundance coming into you. But you gotta ask for it, you gotta seek it, you gotta believe it, feel it deep down in. Advice for Sagittarius, August 10th through the 17th. Nothing will come of this situation, void of course, moon. Do not allow yourself to get emotionally excitable by whatever this person is doing. Express what you need, but don't do it with aggression. Advice for Sagittarius, August 10th through the 17th. Adjustments are required, third corner moon. Advice for Sagittarius, August 10th through the 17th. You and your loved ones are safe, new moon in Cancer. But you don't see coming at the bottom of the deck. Balance spirituality and practicality, full moon in Pisces. A time for healing, balsamic moon. Work through your fears, new moon in Scorpio. A win-win outcome is forecast. 
full moon in Libra. Okay, so this is figure outable. But you need to heal. You need to make the adjustments that you need to make. You need to not let yourself get emotionally traumatized by more stuff. Because when we react, we're allowing ourselves to be emotionally traumatized. Do not give that person your power. Balance that spirituality and practicality within yourself in that full moon in Pisces. So you can bring that emotional reaction to a close. Because it doesn't serve you. You're reacting because of some fear-based trigger. It doesn't serve you. If you want to elevate to the next level, you've got to move it a different way now. Message for Sagittarius. Wands of enchantment. With our wands, we recharge your energy whenever it wanes. Ask for our help and we will work our wand magic and revitalize you. You will feel an immediate boost in pure, sparkling energy. Now, I'd like to remind you that while well, we use the term fairies in the Celtic culture before Christianity, there was no such thing as angels. Fairies are really just angels. Okay, so ask for help when you need it. Motion detected at front door. And there's your confirmation. I can think of no better way to end than that i hope that helps sagittarius because it is what i have for you i'm sorry it was such a long one but and just remember as you go about the world this week that you are a child of the universe no less than the trees and the stars and you have a right to be here